my dear brothers and sisters in Jesus George Harrison of Beatles group happened to die in 2001 at the age of 52 Harrison was the leading member of this group who also had been a disciple of Pandit Ravi Shankar in learning sitar and Indian music and they have produced a lot of fusion music to the excitement of the young people of the day as he died the anchor of uh, the television show today invited anthony curtis the writer famous writer in the magazine rolling stone and made an interview with him about harrison anthony curtis explaining the powerful effect that george created among the young people with the powerful rhythm and simple melodies to rock them and roll and dance with the music he said but george harrison was a powerful speaker for a meaningful spirituality and curry explaining or concluding the whole show said john's search for a meaningful spiritual experience was so powerful he said anything in life can wait but not the search for god even though many of the traditional believers may not be agreeing with the vision of uh, george harris about god or faith nobody could deny his statement and only could admire his powerful saying that anything in life can wait but not the search for god anything can wait in life not the search for god this is the great powerful message and mindset the church wants us to give before us on this second sunday of advent and a great example of this great search or seeking for the lord is personified in the person of john the baptist john the baptist was the one who was seeking for searching for waiting for looking for around for the savior the anointed the one who is sent by god he knew he was a precursor but he didn't know the person then he was searching for this great powerful inspirational image of john the baptist as a seeker is to be followed by each one of us that's what the church wants us to be reminded of through all the scriptural readings today john a gift of god by his name and a cousin of mother mary so an uncle to jesus by relationship an example of seal by his nature and a precursor of lord jesus by mission and a powerful speaker of the new testament with inspirational words and powerful verbal expression stands as a great model for us searching for the lord his life itself was fashioned based on this great passion he kept himself away from the worldly possessions worldly positions and worldly passions and jesus himself certified about john telling that there was no one greater than john who is born of women and jesus asked why did you go to the wilderness to see what did you go to the wilderness to see the reeds that waves according to the wind or to see people clad in silk and uh, gold you will find such people in king's castle john was a person who dedicated himself totally in search of god his food was locust and honey 
his dress was made of smelling camel hair his girdle was of leather his abode was in the jungles he lived a life of a hermit this is what an example of a seeker of god we find but can we follow him in that way can we live out all our life the world our families our responsibilities and live on this minimum seeds and things like that perhaps no but in every religion we find they set apart a particular season to keep themselves away from this worldly attractions and uh, temptations to keep themselves close to god to accept the spiritual life very powerfully and they do fasting penance prayer abstinence silence all kind of spiritual exercises so the season of advent is meant like that we may not be able to live like a hermit like john the baptist but we will be able to make our ways better in our search for god by cutting away from the worldly attractions and temptations and clo- going close to the divine experience all this kind of uh, rituals which we happen to practice during the season of advent are not a kind of a ritualistic repetition of some ecclesiastical imposition or social compulsions just doing some of these rituals sometimes we fall into the fake feeling that we are more spiritual this is where john becomes more powerful telling us apart from this external rituals you have to have your internal conversion change of heart john was one of the powerful speaker in the new testament times his message was repent metanoia change your ways from evil to good from the world to god make straight and the ways of the lord the crooked ways has to be straightened up the crooked ways of our heart our passions our thinking our relationships have to be straightened up that was the message of john the baptist to turn away from our evil ways and turn towards the divine ways is easy to dream but difficult to practice few years back in the united states of america there appeared a kind of an attractive advertisement of a company who told that whoever wants to take off the tattoos you have drawn on your body we will do it painless and expenseless ways for you it was a kind of a great excitement among the people at a time to draw tattoos of different uh, images pictures words or symbols on different parts of the body sometimes becoming and sometimes unbecoming after making these tattoos few years later many of them felt that they are out of place they want to take it off but they have made it as a permanent mark on their skin they could not uh, change it so the response to this advertisement was really amazing thousands and thousands of phone calls and letters came to their office from the people those who wanted to take of the tattoo from their body seeing this great rush and excitement of the young people the school district of los angeles and a cable television company joined together to produce a film on this under the title untattoo you they interviewed all these people those who wanted to take off the tattoos asking them the questions why did they want to have the tattoo 
what kind of tattoo they liked, where did they want it to do, what was their excitement in doing that, how were they enjoying and showing it off to the other people, and later, why did they feel bad about it? What did they want to change? And how they were finding it difficult to get rid of that. So, this film was an excellent film to analyze the social psychology of an immediate attraction and later repentance. This film, Untattoo You, got the state award of that year. It is very popularly spread among the people there. This Untattoo You perhaps is the model of repentance. During our life, we would have done many things which we later thought that it was bad, that we didn't want to do that, but we want to change it. This is repentance. But when we want to change away from these ways or habits that we have developed in our lives, perhaps we fail to follow that or to realize it. And it creates a kind of a guilt conscience, disturbed feeling or disappointment in our lives. It is in this context we have to understand what is the real meaning of metanoia, repentance, turning away from the world, turning towards God, what will be the feeling that we will have. There was a little baby studying in the fifth grade in a family whose name was Tony. Someday, somebody gave him a present, a, a presented him a sling to hunt small birds or insects like that. He was so much excited to have it, he took that and went around the ground and forest nearby and tried to use this sling to kill some birds. But he failed, he could not get, uh, get any birds shot with his sling. He tried on squirrels, some reptiles, but he failed and he was so much dis disappointed. And he was coming back to home as it was getting late. As he was coming to his house, near the house, he found his grandmother's duck was walking. Out of his desperate feeling to kill something, he just used his sling and it really hit on the head of the duck and it died. He was so much embarrassed, disturbed. What he did, he looked around, nobody was there. He just buried the duck under the mud and was trying to rush back to the house. As he buried and turned away, he found his sister Mary standing there. He understood that Mary has noticed it, but they kept silent. On that day, after dinner, all were going to the common room. Then the grandma told Mary, please come and help me to wash the dish. Immediately Mary told, Grandma, Tony wants to help you, he says. Then he turned to Tony and told her, told him, remember that you have killed the duck of grandma, so try to keep yourself in her good books. Go and do it. Tony went and helped her to wash the dishes. Next day in the afternoon, grandpa was calling all the children and told, come, let's go for fishing. Then grandma told Mary, but you wait back at home to help me with the dinner. Then immediately Mary told grandma, Johnny insists that he has to come with you and help you for making the dinner. Then he looked at Johnny and told, remember the duck of grandma. Immediately Johnny took a chance to go back to the kitchen and help her, help her and others went for fishing and they came back with excitement and joy with a lot of fish. Next day morning, before going to the school, grandma was busy preparing uh, breakfast. Then Mary called Johnny and asked him, go and help mama, grandma in the kitchen. Remember the killed duck of grandma. Johnny goes there. He really gets fed up and disturbed. He could not take it anymore. After some time, he calls grandma, I'm really sorry. Please forgive me. I have done one mischief. I used my slingshot and killed the duck you were dearly growing, rearing. And I 
buried it under the mud. Grandma bent down, hugged him and told Tony, don't worry, I forgive you. I noticed you killing the duck through my windows, but because I loved you, I just forgave, forgave that act and I did not disturb you. But I was waiting to see how long you are going to be acting like a slave at the instruction or intimidation of your sister in this context. Tony said, Grandma, I am relieved. I am so happy. I love you. You forgive me. This is the experience of repentance. Once you turn back to God and repent over your sin, it is not a guilt feeling that comes to you, but a living of being loved. This is what Jesus wants, or John wants us to create in our hearts to receive the Savior at the time of Advent. As Jesus comes, we must repent of our worldly ways and turn towards God and change ourselves, our attitude, straighten up the ways of the Lord. Make it straight. Make straight the ways of our heart through repentance. Repentance is love actually. Coming back to God out of love, not out of fear. Not out of guilt, but out of gift that Jesus gives us. So let this be the great inspiration, enjoyment of the second Sunday of Advent, preparing ourselves to receive the coming of the Lord. Thank you.